Let's talk about outliers. We have two data sets here. We can see that the 14 and the 17 are both further away than a lot of the other data points. So are one of these an outlier? One thing that can help us make this decision is to visualize the data, kind of get a feel for how this data is laid out. And you can see that this 14 and the 17 are both pretty far away from the rest of the data. Well, are they outliers? Before we start, which one do you think is an outlier? I could see somebody arguing the 17 is an outlier because it's so far away from the data. But I could also see someone arguing the 14 is an outlier because this data looks so tight. There's no gaps like there are here. And this is so far away given a data set that's really close together. There is a general consensus on how to test if something is an outlier. So we cut the data sets in half so we can find the median. The number in the middle is called the median. So this one has a six in the middle. So this data set has a median of six. There is no number in the middle up here. So we take the average of these two numbers and four plus five over two is equal to 4.5. So at the median of 4.5, we can see that half of the data is to the left and half of the data is to the right. And same thing at the six, we can see that half of the data is to the left of this median and half of the data is to the right. Sure, it takes up more distance, but it's still half of the observations. So next, we want to find the medians of these halves. This first one is called the first quartile. And on bottom here, the middle number of this half of the data is three. And on top here, once again, there is no middle number. So we average the two and the three to get 2.5. The reason it's called the first quartile is at 2.5 or at three, about one quarter of the data is on or below that first quartile. And then for short, we call that Q1. Next, if we take the median of the second part of the data, we call that the third quartile or Q3. And at 6.5, three quarters of the data is to the left of it. And at nine, roughly three quarters of the data is to the left of it. Next, we're interested in how far apart are the Q1 and the Q3. This is called the inner quartile range or the IQR. And we figure that value out by doing the third quartile minus the first quartile and we get four or six. The next step, we want to multiply this IQR times 1.5. On top, 1.5 times four is equal to six and on bottom is equal to nine. So now what we do with this number is we're going to go six to the right from our Q3 and six to the left from our Q1. And on this bottom one, we're going to go nine to the right of our Q3 and nine to the left of our Q1. So this is generally accepted how you test for outliers. Any number that is within this range is not an outlier. And any number outside of this range is considered an outlier. This 14 is an outlier, but the 17 is not. And if we get rid of all this stuff and just look at it visually, this is considered an outlier. This is not. Does that feel weird? A big part of it is these gaps here kind of say that the data can have some variation. Whereas here, it feels like, oh, there's not a lot of room for variation because it's so close. That's why this ended up becoming an outlier. But this one didn't vary as much as this one did. If you guys want to try some of these on your own, I have this page on andymath.com. A link is in the description and the comments. There's some practice problems you can try and they all have answers and they can also have the work. At the bottom, there's also some related pages with similar topics. How exciting.